Hey everybody, I'm David and welcome to Awk Talk, the series where we talk about ocarinas and other music stuff. I've gotten a lot of questions about how to properly play double and triple ocarinas in the past, so I recently asked you guys on my Facebook page, what are some of the biggest struggles that you're currently facing or have faced in the past? And as a result, I came up with five playing tips of how to properly play double and triple ocarinas. Now, if you don't yet have a double or triple ocarina and you're just kind of curious about how these ocarinas work, I highly recommend that you check out my introduction to double and triple ocarina video. I'll put a link to it right here, and there'll also be a link in the description. Description below. Now for this video I'm going to be using my double sweet potato from Songbird Ocarina by Focalink Stein and before we even start using the second chamber you have to start building the habit of preparing for the switch with your right hand. And what I mean by this is if you're going to be playing mostly in the upper part of the range with the left hand, that's the notes G through D, you don't actually need your right hand to cover the holes uh, in the lower part of the range of the first chamber. You can take your right hand and let it rest on the tone holes of the second chamber, that's this line of holes down here. And here's what that looks like practically. Now this can be best practice if you are using sheet music or some sort of tablature uh, sheets. All you have to do is make yourself a little note of when you need to move your hand over. Anytime that you are not using your right hand on the lower chamber, switch over to the right chamber. A common mistake for people just starting on multi-chamber ocarinas is that when they want to switch to the second chamber, they move their head to do it like this. This is going to make you sick. Not only is using your head to switch slightly dizzying, but it also makes you sluggish because you can only move your head so fast. So the alternative is to quickly change chambers using your wrist. And all you have to do is tilt your wrist, kind of pivot the ocarina on your left thumb, and uh, that makes you much, much quicker. And this is even more practical when you utilize the next hit. Another common mistake for ocarinas in general is that when you place the ocarina to your lips, you can tend to put a little bit too much pressure if you're not careful. And the danger of this with multi-chamber ocarinas is that as you shift back and forth, you can cause a slight abrasion on your lips and actually take a little bit of skin off. So the fix for this is to lightly press the ocarina against your lips, kind of giving it a little kiss, and just enough to seal the mouthpiece so that when you switch, it won't cause any harm to your lips. Now these next two tips are going to vary depending on who made your multi-chamber ocarina, so I highly recommend you spend a little extra time getting to know the characteristics for your ocarina and uh, developing these next two steps, starting with how to focus your airflow. And what I mean by this is that when you're trying to focus on playing one of the chambers, you have to be careful that the air doesn't leak out of the side of your lips and into one of the other chambers. This will usually depend on two factors. First, you have to make sure that you're focusing your airflow using your lips. And this can be done by creating a small opening with your lips, kind of like you're blowing through a straw. Second, you have to get used to the distance between the mouthpieces of both chambers. And this is gonna vary, like I said, between all multi-chambers. So just take a note of how far they are from one another, and then just practice going back and forth between um, two or three notes. Now this is the trickiest feature when it actually comes to making multi-chamber ocarinas, and this is something we call chamber balance. Now when we talk about chamber balance, you first have to understand what a breath curve is, and typically when you play 12 hole or single chamber ocarinas, um, let's say that this is the lower part of the range starting at C, um, you wanna be blowing relatively soft, and as you work your way up the range, you're going to slightly increase your breath with every single note, so that when you reach the top part of the range, usually a D or an E note, you're gonna be blowing a lot stronger. So the breath curve starts here and goes up to here by the time you reach the top of the first chamber. Now when you switch to the second chamber, it's supposed to continue off from the last note of the first chamber. So what you want to do for a natural breath curve is that second chamber has to pick up where your airflow left off here. So this is the top of the first chamber, this should be the bottom of the second chamber. And then you would just continue to raise your breath with every note in the last notes of the scale. This will give you a natural, beautiful breath curve. However, because multi-chambers are so difficult to make, this is not always the case. Sometimes what will happen is when you reach the top of your first chamber's range and you switch to the second chamber, there may be a significant drop in your airflow. So you're playing up to the scale and all of a sudden you have to blow much softer when you switch to that second chamber. Or sometimes you have to blow much stronger because there's a huge leap. It can be really 
destructive mid-performance. So how do you check your Ocarina's chamber balance? Well, all you have to do is get an electronic tuner or a tuner app for your phone, and then as you're looking at the tuner, play through your scale and take a note of how much breath each note uses, especially on the chamber switch. And this will give you a better understanding of your Ocarina's breath requirements. So that's it. I hope these five tips are helpful to you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and I'd love to hear back from you. What are some songs that you're hoping to learn or that you are currently learning on your double and triple Ocarina's? Leave a comment below to let me know. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, I'd love it if you subscribed. I post three videos a week, a new tutorial every Monday, behind the scenes vlogs on Wednesdays, and then music videos on Fridays. So keep an eye out for those, and I'll see you guys in the next video.